So if I had a title for today's message, I, I, I'm so excited to preach this. Because every once in a while you just say, man, I know that I know that I know this is a word from the Lord. This is a word from the Lord. Now, every time I get behind the sacred desk, I, I try to study hard. But if you're a teacher, if you're a preacher, you know there's sometimes that God just opens heaven and just pours his oil. And this is an oily sermon. This is a sermon that, that we need. But if I had a title, I would title it God Rocks. God Rocks. We got five people. Right? God Rocks. How many of y'all know that God Rocks? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God rocks. Go ahead and turn your neighbor and say, God rocks. Yeah, he rocks. Yeah. Now, the religious people are sitting there going, oh, God. And where's this going? God, my God rocks. Yeah, he rocks. So if you have your Bible, y'all ready? Y'all ready for a word? I feel like y'all ready for it this morning. I'm just excited. Luke, na- Luke 19. Luke chapter 19. This is a, I've never preached that, all these verses here. I've heard it all my life. And y'all have heard this all your life, but today we're going to have fun. Today we're going to have fun. We're going to break it down, and uh, we're just going to have a a great time. God rocks. Everybody say, God rocks. Come on, the rest of you say, God rocks. Luke 19, verse 37 through 40. I'm reading now the New American Standard Bible. Luke 19, verse 37 through 40. Whoo, help me, Holy Ghost. As soon as he was approaching near the descent of the Mount of Olives, The whole crowd, listen to me, not 90%, everybody. Can y'all imagine if everybody showed up today to have church, what it would be like in here today? Could you imagine if everybody showed up with the right mindset, what the service would be like today? And listen to what he says. The whole crowd of disciples began to praise God joyfully. With a loud voice. So I don't believe in all that loud stuff. You wouldn't fit in very well here. This is a loud voice. Here's why they were praising him. And here's why we should praise him this morning. Because of all the miracles that they had seen. Matter of fact, we're going to take a five second praise break right there. I've seen God. I've tasted God. God's been good to me. He saved my soul. He redeemed my spirit. And I ain't going to let nobody out praise me today. I ain't going to let nobody out praise me today. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's so good. See, watch this. The religious people, you'll get on, you'll get on religious people's nerves really quick. Really quick. I don't know why they got to do all that shouting. Watch this, because I ain't going to hell. Because I ain't going to hell. I believe what I preach. Watch this, watch this. Shouting. Everybody say shouting. Oh, verse 30 says shouting. Here's what they were shouting. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. I I wish I I just made a song right there, right there. Verse 39, some of the Pharisees, and and then some translation says the the critical and religious people. (laughs) Some of the Pharisees, the critical and religious people in the crowd said to him, teacher, rebuke your disciples. But Jesus answered, he's bigger than E.F. Hutton too. I tell you, if these, my church, become silent, the rocks will cry out. The rocks will cry out. So I'm just telling you, listen, let me, let me dig deeper. The rocks will cry out. And so I couldn't get that out of my spirit this week. I could not get out of my spirit. He said, if my people, if they're silent, a rock's going to testify. Y'all believe that? Now, come on now. Hold on just a minute. A rock. How many of y'all ever heard a rock talk? That's what I'm talking about. Listen, y'all got to be truthful. It's so easy to come to church and say, yeah, a rock's going to outshout me. How many times have y'all seen a rock? All right, so I'm going somewhere. I got your attention now. So this is good. See, there's something special. I thought I'd start thinking about Elkhorn. There's something special about a church that's happy. Amen. That's excited. A church knows how to praise King Jesus. Yeah, I'm glad we got a praise team that knows how to praise. Amen. I'm so thankful I got, we got a praise team that turns it up, turns it on, and turns it loose. I'm so proud about that. I am. There's something special about a shouting church. And Jesus said this quote, listen to me. If you don't praise me, the rocks will. 
Why? I, I'm going to ask y'all just how I study my Bible. Why did Jesus say that? Why did Jesus say rocks? Why did Jesus say, if you don't praise me, a rock will? So I decided Friday in my study, I said, I'm not preaching today. I decided, I'm going to let a rock cry out today. I said, Lord, I thought about, well, let's just go ahead and have a, a rock concert in here today. Yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, so if you don't praise Jesus, so here's what I've done. I, I brought some, some backup praisers. I, I got a bucket of praise up here right now. And I know y'all, look, this is my sermon. It's what God gave me, so I'm going to preach it. It's not going to be really deep today, but it's going to get in your spirit today. Yeah. See, a lot of people want the book of Revelation. You ain't even figured Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John out yet. Yeah. So I brought my own praise team today. I know we already had some praise, but we're going to find out what y'all are made of today. Are y'all going to let a rock out praise you today? That's what I'm talking about. This rock has a praise. And so we're going to talk about this today. So I brought my own bucket full of rocks, and I believe, listen, I know this. As I was packing the church, they were jumping around. They were, hey! I mean, they were just in there shouting. I'm like, good day, we didn't got into church yet, and you're already praising him. Yeah. Either we believe the Bible or not. See, we read the Bible like it's just a, a good little story, and everything's going to work out for my glory. No, 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 no. He said, if you don't praise me, a rock will. I, how many of y'all believe that? So, okay, here we go. So what did Jesus mean when he said, if you don't praise me, a rock will? So here's what I want to do today. I want to interview some rocks. Yeah, I, I, want, I want them to tell you their story, what they've been through, and I'm going to show you today that a, that a rock, if you're not careful, will outpraise you today. So here's what I want to do. Here's what I want to do. Well, I, I want to ask them some questions. This is my sermon. I worked hard on this. Y'all won't forget this. So I want to, I want to, I want to interview a rock. And I want, I want to introduce you to this rock. And this, uh, what, what's your name and what, what has God done for you? Well, I, I want to give God praise this morning. Uh, and I was the rock that Jacob laid his head on. Oh, I already feel the Holy Ghost. Hadn't even got up in the Word and I already feel the Holy Ghost. And he said, these, well, well I, I was there when, when, when Jacob wasn't having a good day. He lost his fire. He lost his zeal. He lost his dreams. But something crazy happened one night. Jacob wrestled with Jesus. And I was the rock. I seen it all. You, you, you seen it all? I seen it all. I seen every bit of it. I seen Jacob wrestle. I seen him fight. I seen him struggle. I seen him want to give up. He lost his fire. He lost his zeal. He didn't want to go to church. He didn't want to do those things. And I was the rock that Jacob laid his head on. Is, is that it? No, 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 it's not it. I was the rock. Here's something crazy. I was the rock that Jacob poured oil on. Oh, what's oil? He lost his dreams. He poured oil all over me. And that night, while Jacob's head was on me, I seen a ladder. I seen a ladder go from heaven to earth. Hallelujah. I seen angels going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, guarding him, protecting him. And that night he got his anointed dreams back. I was the rock that seen that. I was the rock that was there. And I stopped by today to tell somebody, you've lost your dreams. You lost your fire. And I'm telling you, sometime in your life, you've got to lay your head on something solid again. And God will anoint you one more time. And God will give you anointed dreams back. Somebody give God praise in here today. Anointed dreams, anointed dreams. I just need somebody to believe that. This is the rock of Jacob. So good. Let me go on. Y'all ready? Can I give y'all a couple more? So good. This is the rock of Moses. The rock of Moses. See, we read the Bible. Y'all believe y'all can get water out of that? Come on now. Somebody said it. 
the God that I serve, and I don't know who this is for. Some of you feel like your heart is as hard as a rock. And this is a word from the Lord. Some of you are dried up. Some of you, your hearts is hard. And this rock said, I'm the rock of Moses. The children of Israel were thirsty. They were in a dry season of their life. And I was the rock that Moses come up to. And I know everybody looks at me as a rock, but I got something on the inside of me. Hallelujah. And I got something called living water. Everybody say living water on the inside of me. And sometimes it feels like you get struck in the head. Sometimes it feels like life just throws you down. But he said these words, I was the rock that when Moses hit me, water, living water came out of me. And that just didn't give Moses a drink. He gave everybody a drink. Woo! Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Oh, come on. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. There's water in here. No matter how hard you have become, no matter how distant you think you are, the Bible says, out of your belly will come streams and rivers of living water. Ooh, preach that rock. Yes, living water. And watch this. Here's what I love about the living water. It's not just for me. It's for all of us. It's for all of us. It's for every single one of us, and some of you may feel disconnected. Some of you may feel discouraged, dead, and dry, and your heart has become hard. But sometimes you got to shake yourself, and sometimes the Holy Ghost has got to hit you. But I'm telling you, there's something, listen to me, there's something in you called living water. My God is not dead. He's surely alive. He's living on the inside. He's roaring like a lion. But sometimes you've got to get into a spot in your life where you think you're dead and dry and discouraged. But God said, I've got something in you and I'll shake you till living stuff comes out of you. Woo, I'm going somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all getting this today? Because it said these words, if you don't praise me, a rock will. That's what he's talking about. Let me, let me go on to this. <laughs> the rock of David. The rock, the rock of David. See, some of you are waiting for all the big stuff. And God says, I'll take something small in your life. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. I'll take a little thing in your life, and when God's in the little, he'll make it big. Somebody give him praise in here today. He's big. What's your name? I'm the rock of David. What did God do for you? I was the rock that killed Goliath. Told y'all it's my sermon. I was one of the five rocks that was in David's pouch. But let me tell you, let me go deeper with you. Everybody focuses on the fire, but let me tell you how I got in the pouch. David went down to the brook. He could have picked anybody, but he chose me. He put me in a sling. Somebody help me. He pulled me back, and then he released me into my destiny. And I stopped by here today to tell somebody, God picked you. Y'all, did y'all hear me? God picked, I don't want Elkhorn to be First Baptist. I don't want Elkhorn to, I don't want that. I want Elkhorn to be who God made her be. <laughs> Woo, somebody give me, I feel the, I don't know what y'all feel, but I feel today a rock concert going off in here. Mm. Yeah. And I want, listen to me, this is to me. I felt Lord spoke into me, and I wrote this down. I'm not, I just know when God speaks. It was 11.56 Friday, and y'all can write this down if y'all want to. Some of you say, oh, whatever. I'm just telling you. God says, Brian Rafferty, if you don't praise me, a rock's going to outpraise you. What did he mean, the rock of David? And listen to me very carefully. I want to say this over your life. Because some of you are struggling, I can see it. But today I want to go up against the enemy and I want the rock to kill the nine foot giant in your life again. God picked you. That may not be deep, but to me it set me free Friday. He didn't pick me to be Dr. Billy Graham. 
He didn't pick me to be T.D. Jakes. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I can do it, but I'm not T.D. Jakes. He didn't pick me to be Jensen Franklin. He picked me out of the brook to be Brian Keith Rafferty. And I got a rock in my hand this morning. And he's pulling me. And he's releasing me. Come on, somebody. He's releasing you with a destiny. I'm going to say this again until y'all get this. If you don't praise me, a rock will. Out of all the rocks in that brook, David looked down and there was something special about that rock. He said, I want that one. I want that one. And I can see God standing in heaven saying, I want this youth group. I want that man of God to work on cars and to fix them and to paint them. There ain't no more rocks like you, Perry. Lauren, there ain't no more rocks like you, Gal. You got two children. God says, I want Nolan. I want Joe. I, and I put you in a sling. And I know, Lauren, sometimes as a single mama, you're sitting there going, God, I can't take her. He's just pulling you. He's just pulling you. But one day, in the name of Jesus Christ, he's going to release you into your destiny. Somebody give him praise on that one. He's going to pick you. He's going to pull you. And he's going to release you. I want everybody to say this. Pick me. No, everybody else, everybody else say, listen to me. I don't get up here to say, oh, I hope y'all like it. I'm telling y'all today, either you're going to get this word and you're going to be released into your destiny or you're going to be a church member for 50 or 60 years sitting in your comfortable little chairs and saying, why, where is God? I'm telling y'all today, he stopped by 3145. He picked you, he pulled you, and he's releasing you. Everybody say, pick me. Pull me and release me. Everybody say, pick me, pull me, and release me. Everybody say, pick me, pull me, and release me. Everybody else say, pick me, pull me, and release me. Now, I, I, evidently, y'all didn't get it because this rock is still out shouting, y'all. Brian, I'm just not a shouter. <laughs> we can tell. Are y'all going to let a rock after what God has done for you? That God brought your children back home? Some of y'all should have been dead. You shouldn't be sitting here today. And y'all going to let a little bitty rock out shout you today? Nolan should have been dead as a little kid. I remember him getting on a helicopter and flying to Louisville, Kentucky. I remember him laying there with a little halo on his head. But I'm here today to tell Nolan is a little rock. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! I, we just gonna stop right there and give you. Come on, if you've been born, I'm telling y'all, there's something special in this house. Don't y'all sit there and let a rock out shout you today. Come on. Let's give hell some problems today. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, Willie Bland. I heard you up here. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Here's what I have found out in my life. Y'all know how easy it is to stop your shout? You know how easy it is to forget Gary Reynolds? What God has done for you. Now, I know you think about it every day, but do you remember the, the day that you was in the ambulance? <sighs> Don't forget it. Because I'm telling you, the day you forget what God has done for you and where he has brought you from, there's going to be a rock that's going to take your place. It's going to be a rock to take your place. Can I give you a couple more and I'm out of here? Y'all probably say yes at that time. Thank y'all. Whew, y'all scared me a little bit. What, what's your name? Hi. I'm the, I'm the rock of Mary. What, what, what did God do for you? I, I, I told y'all it was my sermon so I can, I can disguise my voice. Um, y'all Y'all okay? Um, I was there the day that, um, 
they picked me up and they were going to throw me to hit Mary and kill her because she committed adultery. Hmm. So you, you were there when the Pharisees reached up on the ground and picked a rock up. I don't know if it was this big or not. It probably was. Because when they threw a rock, they threw to kill. They threw to kill. They were the, the Romans and the Pharisees were the masters at death. Mary was the rock, is the rock that represents forgiveness. Oh, hallelujah. The rock of forgiveness. <laughs> you remember the story, the Pharisees were getting ready to stone Mary. And all of a sudden, everybody say all of a sudden. Jesus shows up. How many of you know when Jesus shows up, hate can't be in the atmosphere? How many of y'all know when Jesus shows up, healing's going to be in the atmosphere? Yeah. And Mary was there standing while there was a line of people that had a rock in their hand. And one of them was called the Rock of Mary. <laughs> and I love Jesus. He says, those without sin, those who had never messed up, those who think they're good, that everything's right, you're, 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 everything's good, you, you're, and everything's fine in your life. You, you don't got no junk in your trunk. Jesus says, those without sin, go ahead and throw the first stone. And that rock was in a Pharisee's hand. And that rock can testify, he dropped me. He dropped me. I seen, I seen people drop the rocks. And, and, and walk off, and they seen a miracle called forgiveness. Listen to me. Don't y'all ever forget that Jesus Christ has forgiven you. Don't you ever forget that Jesus Christ has forgiven you. And listen to me. Some of y'all need to drop the rocks. <laughs> y'all remember the story? This rock said, I seen Jesus Christ. See, I, I thought about this too. <laughs> You know, everybody always talks about, what did he write in the sand? This rock knows. This rock knows. Now, he hadn't shared it with me yet. Or she hadn't shared it with me. But this rock seen exactly what Jesus Christ wrote in the sand. We don't know, but he knows. She knows. Some of us, listen to me, you need to drop the rocks and you need to forgive people. Did y'all hear me? Churches will shoot the wounded. Listen, you, you got a pastor praying for drunkards. You got a pastor praying for prostitutes. You got a pastor, God, I hope the messed up, but disgusted. I hope the people who are, who are lost and undone. I just don't want to save people here. I want messed up people here. And if you don't like it, I hope they sit beside you. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, come on, Holy Ghost. But as long as you, what's the difference in the Pharisees holding a rock and you holding a rock? Just throw it. I double dog dare you to throw it. Here's what God spoke to me. He said, you tell the people. And I want Aaron to put this on the big screen. Be rough. <laughs> I'm not that smart, but here's what God said. Either you are a stone thrower or a stone mover? Mm, got five people on that. Either you're a stone thrower or you're a stone mover. Either you're a stone thrower or you're a stone mover. I'm going to ask y'all, only you can decide. What are you right now? Don't be lying. Are you a stone thrower? You're worried about what everybody else is doing in their life but you. Are you a stone, you think y'all a stone thrower or are you a stone mover? Whew, God, boy. Yeah, I'm going to have some Jeffersons up in here moving on up. <laughs> Fist don't burn in the kitchen. A bean don't burn on the grill. Like, I'm sorry, yeah, that's just the way it is. <laughs> are you a stone thrower or are you a stone mover? I want y'all to answer. Are you a stone thrower or are you a stone mover? I had a sermon one time I preached. I said, uh, thank God that dogs can't talk. 
So the last rock, I'm going to say it one more time. Are you a stone thrower or are you a stone mover? So this last rock I want to talk about, to me, is one of the most important rocks. And we know it was bigger than this. <laughs> but to me, it's one of the most important rocks because this rock is called the rock of Jesus. It's the rock of Jesus. It's the rock of Jesus. This rock was one that was rolled in front of the tomb. Can y'all imagine what this rock seen? That's why the Bible says, I'm trying to help y'all. Because I've studied this all my life and God finally gave me the revelation. What does it mean if you don't give me praise, the rock will? Because rocks have been somewhere. Rocks have seen some things in their life. Rocks have been in pouches. They've been dropped. They've been rolled in front of a tomb. And if you don't praise God, a rock will. So uh, what's your name and what did God do for you? I'm called the rock of Jesus. And I was the rock that they rolled in front of the tomb. <laughs> no wonder this rock has a dance. No wonder this rock has a shout. No wonder this rock right here that I'm holding in my hand. Can you imagine what this rock seen? This rock seen the Romans put a dead Jesus in a borrowed tomb. This rock... When they rolled it in front of the tomb, Friday, Jesus was in the tomb. Saturday, Jesus was in the tomb. But I love this. Not only did they roll this rock in front of the tomb, an angel moved the rock. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So early Sunday morning, this rock seen something that nobody else has ever seen. This rock seen Jesus Christ, I'm trying to be good, come out of a dead, cold, dark, borrowed tomb. Can you imagine why this rock says, if you don't give God praise, I'll give God praise? I've seen something that nobody else has seen. Jesus Christ is real. He's alive. He's inside of you. And if you don't give him praise, I will. Mm. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This rock witnessed Jesus Christ coming out of the tomb. I love this rock right here, though. And I'm probably going to keep this one. Because this story, when God gave this to me, it meant a lot to me. Matter of fact, I know I'm in the vein of God because this rock right here represents salvation. Matthew 7 says that when the storms of life come, if, you're not built, if, you don't, if you don't build your house upon the rock, the waves and the storms and the wind will knock you off your foundation. Could it be the reason why this pandemic is knocking people off their foundation is because they're not built on the right foundation? Yeah, it is time. Listen to me, church. It is time. Elkhorn Baptist Church, I'm your pastor. And I'm going to tell you this. It is time not to take a back seat. It is time to let God drive the vehicle and get prayer out of the back closet of your, of your car and stand up and fight for what you believe in. The government does not own this church. The rock does. We are owned by the rock. And I'm telling y'all in Jesus' name, there's a lot of people we're mad at Democrats, we're mad at Republicans, you're mad at Demo independents. Why don't you take it out on the enemy? Why don't you just serve him notice this morning and say, you have done crossed the line. You have done mess with the wrong church, the wrong people, because I serve the rock of Jesus. I've seen things in my life that God has moved out of my life. Hallelujah. This rock represents salvation. And let me tell you how I know that this, this sermon's of God. This morning as I was walking to the sanctuary, I'm not, there was a man that stopped me out in the, in the atrium. Travis Begley had him. They were talking. And this man looked at me, and he said this. I didn't go to him. He come to me. He said these words, I need Jesus. Amen. I need Jesus Christ. First, he said, I need to be baptized. 
And I said, first of all, do you know Jesus Christ? Because if you don't have the rock down pat, you can get wet all you want to. You can become a church member all you want to. My question is, is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Do y'all know Jesus? Do y'all know Jesus Christ? Because there's going to come a time when we as God's church, listen to me, you can call this a prophecy, you can call it, they are after the church. Listen to me, they are trying to shut down the church. And I told them this morning, so we ain't shutting the church down. Here's why. When Jesus Christ died, he put a spiritual covering over the community. It's called the church. You take the church out of the community, you got the world back where it wants to be. Oh, Brian, I'm just telling you, all listen to me. You got to make your minds up. Either you're built on the rock, your marriage is on the rocks, your church is on the rocks. Some of y'all may have had some drinks on the rocks, the way it's looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. My mom always told me, Brian, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> if it's here, it comes out for some odd reason. So this morning, somebody already got, praise him, you guys come. Somebody has already got born again out in the atrium before they even came to church. They, they started building their house on the rock. Somebody give God praise. Somebody was lost and dying and going to hell. They were in the tomb. But I saw a rock that, that was rolled away, and Jesus came in, and now they're born again, saved, and filled with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So here's what God told me. You guys can stay standing, because they're coming. If y'all don't, so you sit back down. I got 15 more minutes. <laughs> so here's, if you, listen to me, y'all lean in. If you don't tell your story, a rock will. If you don't share with somebody what God has done for you, a rock will. A rock will. I'm just going to ask y'all this morning, real quick. Are you going to let a rock out praise you? You talk about a sad day. You talk about a sad day. What if you get to heaven and there's a pile of rocks? And Jesus said these words, I saved you, I healed you, I delivered you, I set you free, and you let that pile of rocks out shout you. So I'm going to ask y'all this morning again, why did Jesus Christ say, if you don't praise me, a rock will? You know why? Because a lot of you have lost your dreams. So here it is. The rock of anointed dreams. Some of you have lost your dreams. Some of you, you're, you're here, but you're not. Number two, living water. You have forgot that living water is inside of you. You have become like this rock. Here's your heart. Here's your heart. Here's your heart. You've lost your dreams. You forgot who lives in you. The third rock reminded me, listen to me, that no matter what kind of giant I'm facing, that giants can still fall. No matter if you're here or here. Watch this, you ready? Because see, everybody's like, oh, I'm not as big as that rock. No, but this rock killed a giant. Giants still fall. Some of you have a nine-foot giant in front of you. But I'm telling you today, God has given you a rock. And you better know how to use it. You better know how to use it. This fourth rock is a powerful rock. It's called the rock of forgiveness. Some of you, are you a stone thrower or a stone mover? Some of you need to drop the rocks and forgive the person that you was getting ready to kill. Because the Bible says, listen to this, the Bible says, if you've got hate in your heart, you're a murderer. Come on, y'all. I love Bible school. I'm just telling y'all. Jesus Christ says, if you say, I hate you, you're a murderer. You're a murderer. What you're doing, you're packing a rock. 
And you got somebody you're looking at. And you're back like this. You're like, one more word, one more thing. I'm going to take this rock and I'm going to murder you. That's what you are. Now listen, my standards is not God's standards. God's got his own standards. Matter of fact, let's go deeper. The Bible says if you've got lust in your heart, you've committed adultery. I just wonder how many adulterers we have in the room today. Ow. Preacher, I don't like preaching like this, I know. Because you're, you're throwing a lot of stones at people. But I'm asking y'all to become stone movers. Stone movers. Stone movers. And the fifth one is the rock of salvation. What this rock told me, Jeff, is I don't have to stay in the tomb. I don't have to stay in the tomb. I can come out. The rock was rolled away. Jesus Christ stepped out. I don't have to go into that situation no more. I'm an overcomer. I'm an achiever in Jesus Christ's name. If God be for me, who can be against me? Church, drop the rock. Drop the rock. In Jesus' name. So I don't know where y'all are at. I know where I'm at. God's changing your pastor. God is changing me. And so here's what I want to do. I just want to pray. I want to open this altar up. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, already watch me. Come out of that tomb today. Come out of that tomb today. Don't die and go to hell. Don't do it. If you're a person, you're holding a rock. What? Pray to you got to go down just a little bit. Go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. Because I, I want y'all to hear my voice. Because if the music gets you fired up, you're fired up on emotions. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. I'm serious about this. Some of you have unforgiveness in your heart. And here's what I'm asking you to do. Drop the rocks. Drop. Listen to me. Quit being a stone thrower. And start being a stone mover. Like that will make all the difference in the world. That will make all the difference in the world. So in Jesus Christ's name, some of you are here today, and I'm asking you straight up, have you lost your dreams? Have you forgotten what lives inside of you? Is there a giant standing in front of you? Do you have unforgiveness in your life? And do you need to be saved? So I want to pray. And no matter where you're at, no matter if it's Facebook Live, no matter what, we've had seven people that has literally called in and said, I said that prayer over Facebook, and now I'm saved. They came out of the tomb. Amen? Thank God for technology. But listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit this really quick. Listen to me. Thank y'all for being here. Because I don't care how spiritual you think you are. And I love Facebook. And I, I love that we got the technology. But there, that does not take the place of coming to church, being in the house, listen to the Word, and feeling the Holy Ghost. It does not. That's like saying, I'm going to a UK basketball game, and you watch it from home, but when you get to Rupp Arena, whoo, come on, preach that girl. See, y'all, y'all, I'm just here, she's up here going, I don't know what she said, I think it was tongues. I need an interpreter up here really quick. But here's the deal. The atmosphere is priceless. How many of y'all can testify that, man, listen, there's a difference between Facebook and in-house. There's a difference between Rupp Arena and watching at home. There, there's just a difference. Now, listen, I understand if you're sick, you need to stay at home. But if you're alive and you're well, y'all, y'all, y'all pray protection over me right now. If you can be here, you need to be here. Are y'all okay? Y'all should be shouting, I'm here, preacher, I'm here. Yeah, amen. Anointed dreams, living water, giants still fall, forgiveness, and the rock of salvation. Somebody give God praise in here today, amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to say a prayer. 
no matter where y'all are at, some of y'all need to drop the rocks. Some of y'all, you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You need to come out of the tomb. Some of you, you've stopped dreaming. This season of COVID has got you up in the house in a cave. And some of you, I'm telling you, you forgot who lives in you. It's called living water, living. He's, watch already, he's not dead. He's alive in me. He's not lying, lying dormant inside of me. He's alive in me. And so, man, listen, I understand where you're at. But I'm asking y'all today to come to this altar. We got a lot of praying to do. Landon Newton, we need to pray for Landon. Yeah, Connie Rakes over in Lebanon had been fighting depression, chronic depression for eight years. I told her we'd pray for her. She's listening today, by the way. Y'all realize we got people in Ohio, Indiana, Louisville, all over Africa that's watching us today? We're reaching thousands. Elkhorn, y'all ready? Are you a stone thrower? Or are you a stone mover? In the name of Jesus Christ today, let's move some stones. Amen. Let's, let's shake this foundation. So here we go. Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I pray for your precious people. God, I preach what you gave me. And God, I pray that we get our dreams back. I pray we realize that living water is living in us. I pray today, God, that if there's a giant in front of anybody, dear God, that, Lord, that giants still fall in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I pray today we'd be stone movers, dear God, not stone throwers. Let us drop the rocks. And, God, I pray today if anybody here does not know you or watching by Facebook, that today, God, they would come to know you as their Lord and Savior. I love you. I praise you. I thank you for this amazing church and these beautiful people. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said.